And it's time for Off the Press, where we take a look at some headlines of the some newspapers in the country. And we'll begin with the Punch newspaper. And the Punch newspaper this morning leads with Salah. Current pains necessary, says Tinubu, government preaches unity. Salah, current pains necessary, says Tinubu, governor's preach unity. And the riders there, President assures Nigerians of better days. PDP Lambist APC and governors demand peaceful coexistence as Muslims celebrate Salah. So there you have the picture of President Ahmed Tinubu uh, and some other people there, top dignitaries, Nuhuru Badu, uh, former governor of Lagos State, Fashola, and some others are the praying, praying ground. Um, you have others, pictures of other Muslim faithful uh, celebrating the sala uh, at different places so those are the pictures on the front pages uh, the front page of the punch newspaper you have um, going down drama at cynic ex spokesman and a delicate supporters clash at Idil ground yeah drama there a uh, senate ex spokesman and a delicate supporters clash at aid ground that happened yesterday. Uh, and above the masthead of the Punch newspaper, you have marketers project 700 naira a liter for petrol. 700 naira a liter for petrol. That's marketers projection. And then a 120 billion naira ussd debt won't be cancelled telcos tell banks nigeria's digital infrastructure inadequate for cashless economy that's world bank there page 20 is where you have details of that business day from the punch newspaper and business day is leading with 4.4 trillion naira cash bonanza for federal government others as FAC gets boost. 4.4 trillion naira cash bonanza for FG others as FAC gets boost. Nigerians suspended travel plans to US, Europe as fares soar. Nigeria suspend travel plans to U.S. and Europe as fares soar. Uh, summer travelers shift to Egypt, Rwanda, South Africa. Well, those are the two major headlines on Business Day. And from Business Day, we move to the Guardian newspaper. The Guardian newspaper leads with Salah. Presidency, PDP trade blames over bleak, low-key celebrations. The six is where that story is written. Presidency, PDP trade blames over bleak, low-key celebrations. And that's talking about Salah there. You still have pictures of uh, President Tinubu and some dignitaries praying yesterday at the Eid ground. And then a smaller picture of... Uh, of Nigerians there, some you know Muslims who are supreme at different sections of the Eid ground. Above the masthead you have flooding FCTA to evacuate residents of trade more estates. We saw horrible videos and pictures from Abuja uh, last week. Very horrible. So FCTA to evacuate residents of trade more estate. Details of that is on page 8 of the Guardian newspaper. Land Use Act between powerful governors and oppressed citizenry. Land Use Act between powerful governors and oppressed citizenry. Page 4 is where you have details of that. Lobbyists stranded as Tinubu relocates from Bodilon to a White House. Page 6. Is where you have details of that. FG to stop funding professional bodies councils from 2026.
that's our hot topic today. We'll be taking a look at this in depth and uh, details of that is on page five of this newspaper. Adeleke Senator clash over reserved space at Oshun Praying Ground. Details of that is on page seven. And stock market gains five trillion naira in six months. And that's the much you'll be taking from the Guardian newspaper. From the Guardian newspaper, we'll move to leadership. And leadership is leading with salt and to politici political leaders. Shared your extravagant lifestyle for Nigeria's sake. Shared your extravagant lifestyle for Nigeria's sake. Page four is where you have details of that. And the mass trip there, despite shrinking income, Muslims celebrate Salah in style. Above the masthead, you have Abbas loyalists scramble for 15 juicy committees. Mm -hmm. 40 Nigerians regain freedom from Libyan detention. Uh, that's on page 8. Let's really find details of that. What happened to these Nigerians? Why were they imprisoned in Libya? And how did they gain, regain their freedom? And here you still have that uh, headline, edgy to stop funding professional bodies councils in 2024. Page 6 of the leadership is where the details of that is. And so you have pictures of people celebrating Salah, praying and killing Ram. This is, you know, the biggest, uh, I believe, that Muslim faith will celebrate um, in the year. Uh, it's a very big one and there are divergent views on how Nigerians celebrated it. Uh, Muslim faith will celebrate it this time around. So I'm saying it's too low key and attributing it to the economic realities on ground today. Uh, not many people having enough to celebrate with. Well, that's the much I'll be taking from the leadership newspaper. And it's time for our guests to join us to take a look at some of the headlines we just read out from the front pages of some national dailies. Mr. Ezekiel Nya Etok, public affairs analyst, is joining us now from Akwaibam. Good morning to you, Mr. Ezekiel. Good morning and happy Salah celebrations to everybody in the studio and all Nigerians. Indeed, indeed. Well, let's start with the headlines on the Punch newspaper. Uh, Salah, current pains necessary, says Tinubu, uh, and then governors preach for unity. You, you listened to his speech yesterday, didn't you? What do you make of his speech? The president saying that uh, current pains are necessary. Nigerians should make more sacrifice. Yeah, I, I, I think that there's a major disconnect that we really need to not just talk about, but interrogate and fix as fast as possible. You know, when, when I, I've been privileged over the years to have a direct relationship from the presidency to several state governors and everybody, I, I've been that privileged. And one thing stands out. People get to the president or to the governors and shield them from the realities on ground. And it takes a few people who understand this, who should understand this, who saw this when they were outside and now they are inside for them to say, no, I need to be in touch with current realities. And let me say this, one of the people that did that, that impressed me and something I needed to copy was Mr. Peter Obi when he was, you know, the governor of Anambra State. He gave phones to student leaders, secondary school, head boys and say, this is the line, you can reach me directly. Send me messages. Let me get in touch with you. And I know he did that to other sections. Every leader, every president should have a dedicated line that nobody holds for him. He holds it. 
And you don't need to call that line if you are calling, you're wasting your time. They send messages. Now at night, you will just sit down. It seems that my network is, um, I don't know if you can. Okay, good. Then at night, he would sit down or maybe in flight or something and just randomly go through things. Why am I saying this? The first thing is that I don't know to what extent Mr. President is aware of, of the hardship and the pains of the people for real. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, I don't know to what extent he understands the psychology of human mind, human being, of leadership and emotional intelligence. Number three, I do not know to what extent he appreciates body language as opposed to spoken words as being the better and higher communication to the generality of the people. Why am I saying all this? Number one is that there is massive suffering, unprecedented level of suffering in the land. And number two, as a leader, the first thing he wants to show is body language, not just speeches, no. He wants to see himself as very simple. He wants to see himself as target driven. He wants to show the people that look, times are hard and we've got all we've all got to make sacrifices. How on earth do you explain how the convoy, no matter the explanation of a Nigerian president having close to 100 SUVs, the video made the rounds and I don't know if his media minders were careful to go through the mindset of the people, the different comments, I belong to over 250 WhatsApp groups. And I can tell you that from every section of Nigeria, when I have time to go through some of those things, because most of the things you just delete, 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 because you can't read them. If you do that, it means you're not going to do your work. But you just stumble off things, which is just what I said earlier. You know, some things will jump at you, no matter how it is. And, and the mood of the nation is very depressive. It's very demoralizing. It's very much not in tune with this government that should that came on the back of people saying no you shouldn't have been you didn't win you didn't win so what he needed to do was that quick thing it's not about signing students loan you know it it went up but is it sustained people are starting to inter interrogate then you know um uh, opting the 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 the, the, the uh, retirement age of judges and then you know they are just certain things that are populist but deep down do they show somebody that really has this empathy for the people and really wants to get down to work? I think that Mr. Tinubu is a good man. I think that he means well, but that has always been the story of our leaders. I want to appeal to the people, his close friends, for them to help him, help your governor. You know, and 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 I'm just, I'm just concerned. So him telling him that hard times are coming, it's like, excuse me, can you just show me with your appointments, with your lifestyle, with the things that you do, that you understand that, and you are willing to be the leader, lead from the front, and make the first sacrifice, and say, Nigerians, do as I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, if you, if you go to leadership newspaper, you find where the Sultan is advising politicians to shed their extravagant lifestyle for Nigeria's sake. I, 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 I couldn't agree more with the Sultan. And that is exactly what I'm talking about. And I'm happy that somebody at the level of the Sultan can read between the lines, mm -hmm. can see what is going on, and he's advising our leaders, please, share that extravagant lifestyle. I don't know if I'm still being heard. It's as if I'm frozen. Yeah, you know? We are hearing you. Please. We are still hearing okay, you. Okay, great. Yeah, great. Please, share that. And and it's, it's a very important message. Absolutely important. Because the Sultan is in touch with the people. Mm -hmm. He understands the pains of the people. And he sees the contradictions in the system. And he knows that somewhere along the line, if push comes to quack, then something, you know, the consequences might be dire. So the best thing is to nip in the bud. And that is exactly what I'm talking about today. 
is not about the governors, yes, and the president, but about the people around him, about the friends around him. Go find a way. You know, there was something I wrote, and um, I wanted to send to my governor. Then I sent it to one former governor who is a very, very close friend of mine. And he called me and said, Ezekiel, don't send it. And I'm like, why? He said, okay, if you must send it, modify here, here, here. The moment that you start to advise government, what they see is not advice, they criticism. Mm -hmm. No matter how nice, my language is ever extremely diplomatic because I believe that you do, should not demystify leadership. But you see, they read behind your, your good intention. And that is why a lot of people are afraid to tell truth to power and advise their leaders. But I ignored, not that I ignored, I took part of the advice, but I still modified it somewhat and still sent the message. And somehow, in this case, I was lucky because I had a one-on-one -on -one talk with the governor. And let me tell you what happens. While I was talking with the governor, usually if there's a third person, I kind of mellow down because I need to be very careful. But if it's one-on-one, -on -one, you know, for, for eyes meeting, I'm able to tell them the things diplomatically, you know, but, but calling it as close to what it is as possible, okay? While I was talking, the SSG came in mm -hmm. and he sat next to me. After some time, I looked at the governor and said, Your Excellency, please tell your uh, your deputy, your, your SSG to move to the other seat. He has been pinching my leg and he's starting <laughs> to hurt. You know, the governor started laughing. You know, I said, because, you know, and you know, the meeting was supposed to be about 15, 20 minutes. It lasted for one and a half hours because I was very honest with him. I was very, um, um, what the polite, I, I acknowledge him as a governor. I talked to him and deferred to him and gave him all the respect, but I pointed out certain things to him and he was very appreciative. The meeting lasted for about one and a half hours. You know, this what statement you made say? about this um, SSG who was pinching you takes me back to the <laughs> initial statement you made about those who, uh, the aides to the president, whether they are not, you know, shielding him from the realities on ground. And then when I hear such statements, Ezekiel, I begin yeah. to say to myself, why put the blame on the aides? It is the president uh, or the governor you know, that sought for the office. You know, they should be... I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. Yeah. I've been extremely close to several governors. When I say close, I mean one-on-one -on -one relationship. Do you understand? It's a privilege that God has given me. And that seat is a lonely seat. It's absolutely lonely. Everybody that comes is coming to get, to take, to, to, to you know, to manipulate they are coming with all sorts of things, so are diabolical. We have no idea what our leaders suffer. When the Bible says we should pray for those in government, God understands the seat of power is so lonely that leaders are looking for affirmation. You know, so in not knowing how to draw lines, they now fall into psychophancy that just take them captive. It is when they leave office that the reality dawns on them. You understand me? There was another governor that I told him, I said, Your Excellency, have you wondered why each time I come here, I talk about your predecessor, you know, the, 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 the person you took over from, and I talk in glowing terms about them? He said, yes, I've been wondering, why do you do that? I said, because I want you to watch. You see, that seat is not about you. Whoever comes to, to you to destroy the former person, that is how, not that person, because once you leave, that is how that same person will go to the next person to destroy you because it's not about you. It's about the stock in trade of the person. So, so if I talk good of the former person, it means that when you leave this office and I come to the next person, because I will always have access, it means I'll talk good of you. So the important thing is that not all those that come to destroy your predecessors know them because they are the people that are going to destroy you. Now, these are some fundamentals that our leaders really don't know. And they went through hell. Our electionary process is such that you spend so much that when you get into that office, you know, you, you are really not yourself from the beginning. You are not like 
sent by the people. You are hardly ever sent by people. I think the first person that has come close to being sent by the people first is uh, President um, uh, Buhari, you know, because he, he always had these followers. I don't know to what extent he rewarded them. The next person, which is the real example, is Mr. Peter Obi. What happened was organic, you know. But you see, a man like Mr. Tinubu, to the best of my knowledge, I may be wrong, you know, had to fight his way, push and pull. And, you know, there was, a, there was an expression, he said, something, something, and run with it, you know, to get to that seat. Oh. So when he gets to that seat, he does not see the people are, oh, this would have put me here. I don't know. There has to be a way of reordering the emotional connect because we exploited him. We exploited him. We took every advantage we could of him to give, give him that. And then once he gets to the seat, we now want him to become an angel and God to now start thinking of us. We need to, 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 to uh, what's the word? We need to interrogate our leadership recruitment processes to ensure that, that whoever gets to the office feels a sense of duty, a sense of responsibility, a sense of gratitude, a sense of honor to give back to the people that gave to them. That is an instructive word. Give back to the people what they gave to you. What did you give to your leader when he was going there? Was it exploitation? Then you should expect exploitation from him. Did you give him love and concern and support? Then you should expect what you sowed to be what you reap. It, it's a whole new discussion and paradigm that we need to start exploring because we keep blaming leadership, 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 leadership. I wanted to be governor. We are still on it. I don't want to tell you what my family has gone through. I don't want to tell you what I've suffered. And then God makes me a governor. And then you just come, all of you. The insult I got, even from my classmates, even the, the poor people you want to help, my guy, if you are not ready for this thing, leave it. This thing is not for poor people. If you don't even have to have enough money, go, 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 go and look for, uh, maybe go for Senate. Go. You know, people just say things that hit you so hard and so bad. And then maybe for you to pander to their own whims and caprices or expectations, you go and borrow money at very hard terms, you know, giving out probably half of your soul, and then you become a governor. And the same people, they switch 180 degrees and turn around, and they expect you to be loyal to them, to serve them. We really need to pray for God to help our leaders to forgive, to forget, and to know that the essence of seeking that office was a public good and not vengeance. That is why it is the number one seat leadership leadership positions in anywhere is not yeah. an easy thing it's not something for just anyone and so yeah. those who aspire for leadership positions especially political leadership officers should have known should have understood should have investigated should have prepared their minds for where they are going if you do not know and understand the psychology of the place you're going to or of your environment, you're probably not ready for that office because we're talking about a country as diverse and complex as Nigeria. So anyone who yeah. is going or who has vied to become the president of this country should have been sensitive enough to know what he was getting into. So I still me, maintain me, yes, that you, the box stops at the desk of the president. It is your call. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. That is why one of the things I am proposing in our electoral process is that by the time that you buy a form to become a governor or a president, any of the elective offices, mm -hmm. One of the things in the timelines must be that the INEC has a program for each party where they will, for one week, before campaign starts, if possible, before you buy the form, uh -huh. once you give expression of interest, they should have one week of intensive training of the people that want to occupy the office. Do you know that I vied for the office of the governor? Up till this time, all that I have is what I think. What if my mindset is wrong? That's all I have. 
Nobody has sacked me in spite of the monies you pay and everything. I neck collects, you know, parties sell forms at a hundred million for presidency, 50 million, mm -hmm. and they don't call you and give you one week of what manifesto is all about, what the party manifesto is all about, what the office is all about, because for every office, there are certain expectations. The fact that, you know, you know what they do in Nigeria? Mm. They call you, how much do you have? You say, I have up to 500 million. They say, no, go for Senate. If you are in, from Akwaibom, mm. you know? Because you can't tell them you have 1 billion, you want to vote, go for governorship. It's like, what is that? Please, go for Senate. You now say, I have 50 million. They say, okay, go for House of Assembly. You know? And if I say, I have 20 billion ahead, I give up government, governor's form. Come and collect governor's form. Do you, do you understand me? Mm -hmm. So you are judged by how much you have. And you know that the office of the governor, a lecturer could be better suited for that office than a business mogul that mogul that has 50 billion to spare. Mm -hmm. You understand? Some people are suited for, for National Assembly, Senate or House of Reps. You have to know the difference between Senate and House of Reps and how both chambers operate. They are, not, they are lawmaking, but they are not exactly the same thing. You know? So who gives us? What is INEC saying about enlightenment of these people? It is at that time that you know that guy, when you become president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, you are no longer yourself. Oh. No, no, no. You are now public property. So it's not about what you think. This is who I am. No, nobody wants who you are. There are protocols of the office. There are expectations of the office. The man know they talk. No, you need a communicator. You need somebody, you know, one of the highest levels of, you know, um, requirements of leadership hmm. is that word, charm. Apart from empathy, charm. Charisma. Charm helps you to connect with your people and mm -hmm. helps you to push across you, your, you know, your so, so that is why we have a democracy, right? That is why we have yeah. a democracy. And uh, the belief that the electoral umpire is independent enough to operate effectively. And that is why, uh, towards the build-up to these elections, debates are called for. And you expect that these people vying will come and give us their manifesto, defend whatever it is they're promising to do. That will give or that gives the citizens the opportunity to drill them, you know, and find out just how rich is this person in his mind, how compassionate, how enlightened, how educated, how brilliant and intelligent is this person vying? And so they begin to begin to choose from those debates who they should choose to lead them. So it all borders on the whole process being what it should I, be. I, and that is I why am. we are glad that we have the court to help us also um, perfect things because we have seen that there are some rough edges that need to be dealt with. And so very soon we'll find out what really happened, right? If the you know, if the judiciary lives up to expectation, you know it's it's unfortunate um, that um, I I just want to be careful not to use the same brush and paint everybody because within the judiciary there are I, I've seen people that are of impeccable character, mm -hmm. but it is unfortunate that this is the exception and not the rule. The judiciary, you know, I, I, you know, I told you my case was dismissed, and I'm I'm on my, on my way to the appeal court. In fact, I've already uh, filed my appeal, and I mean, it's 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 just you go back home, you really can't understand how a human being thinks, no matter the level of inducement. If that is the case, at least use style, some level of finesse, mm -hmm. have some level of intelligence that you can apply in what you do. Don't be too brazen. And say if you don't like it go to court or if you don't like it go to appeal anyway that put aside but you see there are when we're when we're having this process of um governorship we had debates and i think that i next should make debate mandatory obligatory to make it compulsory there are certain things that i next owes us if you look at the last election you notice that i next was given over 365 billion 
that is like a billion per day in a, a year to conduct this election. INEC owes us certain duties, obligations by setting out certain parameters. How would you want to be a pre president and you say you cannot debate? Because from what you've just said, the debate helps people to, to, to form, have their, yeah, form their decisions and decide who to... It does. It does. It's very important. You know, when and, and those who do the debate, they should have it in one, two, three sections. Maybe if you want to be a president, we now have in three senatorial districts or three level of debate. The first person is your person, your antecedents, what prepares you, what you understand by the office. Forget about the economy, forget about no, 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 your person. Because I say this because I had I took part in several debates. And one that really, really caught me was one that was done by an individual online. And he was like, the first question was, Akiten Yaito, what do you understand to be the office of the governor, the roles of the governor, and what is it about your life that you know prepares you to take on that role? Number one, what is the role? What do you understand by the role? Number two, what prepares you to be able to play that role? That was about the most important question mm -hmm. because all these ones about economy, project, this, you can have consultants that help you put all these things together, but you've got to understand what leadership is, what the role is, what the expectations are, mm -hmm. and you should tell us right from credo the things, your life. And people will be able to the next day say, no, brother, I was your classmate. It's not true. Or I was this. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's really true. Uh, exactly. You understand me? Mm -hmm. yeah. So let, let's move forward to the leadership newspaper. It has a, a headline there. Uh, FG to stop funding professional bodies councils in 2024. You know, you know, there was a time that the federal government was funding political parties. Time was when they were funding political parties, and every almost then everyone said, had said, a political we, party without yeah, uh, the secretariat. Yeah, they build the secretariat. Apart from building the secretariat, there was a time they were actually giving money, mm -hmm. you know, to to the political parties. But um, professional bodies, I, I happen to belong to a few of them. The chief of which is, um, you know, Architect Registration Council of Nigeria, Akon, mm -hmm. being a registered architect myself. And um, every professional that is registered pays his dues. I, I pay mine, and I'm up to date. And um, luckily for us, as is such that you can even pay 10 years and just forget yourself for some time. But that one also has a problem because when it finally elapses, no, 10 years is not as long as you think. Mm. You know, before you know it elapses, and uh, you had already forgotten about it. But what I'm trying to say is that let them know, let them look at professionals professionals are are people who are trained and should be doing something engage one way or the other so they should be able to pay fees fees and those fees should be able to run their professional bodies people will have reasons why it should be you know no like, like that of political parties i mean we were just forming political parties and doing next to nothing with it and just collecting the money and doing yeah. nothing but that of professional bodies i don't know what justification they will have for them to be in the budget let them become professional take the amount of staff they can afford get the sort of people only that when government keeps having a hand in the appointment of these people then he who pays the piper should dictate the tune because why am i sending my professional money to you by, by and somebody comes in who is not competent enough but because he's sent in by government appointed by so they have to not just say we will not fund you anymore they will also say we will allow you to handle the process of selecting your leadership you know uh for your professional bodies so it should be a holistic thing don't tell me i'll choose for you but you've got to pay what i choose for you it doesn't work that way it's not okay you know worst case scenario tell the professional bodies to send you a list of maybe five and that yours will be to screen as you wish and then accept and if none meet certain criteria that you would have set you send it back to them until they meet send you the people then the professional bodies will now become professionally administered by their people who take responsibility for the appointment the same thing should go to you know something like this INEC. a lot of the bodies that are being 
appointed by the presidency, uh, uh, by Mr. President, there should be a kind of um, deviation from how those people will get selected so that we don't go into too much of political patronage because professional bodies are supposed to be apolitical. Mm -hmm. And then how am I sure that you're not going to give me somebody who is sympathetic to your party for whatever reason, one way or the other? So I think that if they are going to do that, they should do it holistically. So perhaps some sort of uh, house cleaning. Apart yeah. from the fact that the government is trying to cut off wastages, uh, President Tinubu is projected a 6% you know, GDP annual growth, and um, these are some of the measures to, you know, show up revenue, isn't it? Um, I, um, conserve revenue, I would say, you know, and I agree with him. You see, in, in you know, I, I keep making reference. I think one of the best things I did, uh, apart from, you know, apart from, um, let me, the, the cost is, is horrible, it's horrific, it's horrendous. I think one of the best things I did was getting involved in politics and wanting to be a governor. It made me to sit down and interrogate and see several things. You know, it's easy for you to sit down here and talk, you know, and criticize until you get into the battlefield and you are, you are, you are confronted with your, your, your vision and, you know, details. How will you do it? Bringing back to what we we're talking about. You see, number one is you cut waste wastages mm -hmm. you do as much as possible to cut but the question is where are the wastages you go to buy something i went to buy something i had about um, 20 items and three items 10 percent of three items covered the rest of them so i told the man that was selling i said forget about those i don't even want discount on the other one these three give me I, I bargained and opt, you know, I use them, um, you know, the word you know, like um, I, I out of 20, I go just three where I want, you know, things like that. Hmm. But the discount I got on the three covered 100% of the cost of the other, you know, 17 or something. What am I trying to say? When you want to cut wastages, forget about this general. There are certain things you close your eye to, especially the benefits that small people are enjoying. Leave it for them. Hmm. There are some areas that you just Cut that man, you have you have killed a lion with mm. just one stroke. So I, I want I want the president to come and profile those wastages and then put them in boxes in A, B, C. A are those that are real major, mega. Mm. Even if you don't go to B or to C, catch that A and then deal with it very well. In one of such things, I want to advise Mr. President. Let EFCC be like the, you know, the American seal. They don't come out except on major, mega issues. And when they come out, they strike. They strike with the provision of, 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 of a seal. Let EFCC... Now you have a problem with your wife. You go to EFCC. You have uh, your... And nobody is owing you two million. You go to EFCC. Let the police handle those ones. ICPC, all those little... Uh, but, but when you when there are Nigerians who are sucking us dry, there are Nigerians that are operating in billions in foreign exchange, in dollars, billions right. in dollars, you know? So let them go after such people and catch them, and they will get enough resources to do what we've got to do. So if uh, professional bodies... If you put all of them together, what's your annual subvention to them? Does it amount to much? So, you know, spreading yourself thin is not, is not what I want. I want a kind of strategic analysis of these are the A-rated, you know, people that, that we are wasting money on or that are draining us. It's like petroleum subsidy. Do you know that petroleum subsidy alone, alone, if you tackle that corruption in it, you can come back and give us petrol at less than pump price before you can do it you can do it i'm telling you this because number one you would have removed all the wastages and number two you will see that um, somebody just told me that um the, the 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 consumption you know rate has come down from almost 75 million liters per day to probably around 30 or thereabouts and i said it myself that that would be about the range of our consumption so imagine how much we have lost. Those are the sort of things that we should look at. Apart from petroleum, there are one, two, three others that once you catch them, 
You can even give us electricity subsidized. Meter everybody. What does it take to meter Nigeria? We just talk about it. Because come to my house. Because I have a meter, I know when to say, oh boy, turn off this AC. But when it is estimated billing, I will tell them, leave all the ACs on. After all, whether I use, I don't use, they will give me all the ideas. Leave my room to be cold. Leave everywhere to be cold. But when you have meter, not be somebody go tell you, make you turn off the lights. Nobody person go tell you. You get the point. So I think that there are certain things we should take. And at the end of the day, we'll have a better country, a more sane country. But let our president know that he should surround himself with people who are not seeking favors. People who are passionate. And there are people like that in this country. Madame Ezekwesili, the things that she has done shows that she's passionate about Nigeria. It's not about appointment. Me, me, Senator Udo Udoma, who turned down ministerial appointments, not once, not twice, not three times. He came back and said, Ezekiel, I enter as a minister. I come out poorer than I was. Let me face my business. Why? Because he did not go there to benefit himself. He went there to work. So when the next president came and said, please come, he said, oh, God, I beg no vex. I no go fit work again. Let me also face my business so that I don't go bankrupt. People like that exist. They are not one. They are not two. They are many. Let the president look for them. Then his cronies, let him reward me? them with contracts. Find a way to make them get money. Things like that in their pocket. Right. Politics is a game of interest. And the winners must be given the latitude to suffer their victory. But let your aging room be such that when you leave, you become a point of reference. We still talk about George Washington. We just still talk about those American presidents. Out of almost 50 or thereabout, just a few stick out. You can be that president that Nigeria will talk about for generations. Okay, let's move on to this headline on the Guardian newspaper. Land Use Act Between Powerful Governors and Oppressed Citizenry. <laughs> Landlords you know, you know hate land use charge. Yes, you know I'm an architect. Yes. And um, we've been on land use act for a long time. I once went to the World Bank with Madame Okonjo Iweala, who was the CME that time. And um, we're trying to talk of housing. That's one area that I've devoted so much of my life to for over 20 years, advocacy for housing. Mm. If I was just talking about this some days back with a friend, I said, that's the first time in my life I spent about $1,000 in a hotel. I didn't sleep well. Because I had to put on everything. I was like, why? How? We went to World Bank, you know. Please, I paid my fares and I paid my hotel accommodation, everything. <laughs> and when we're discussing and the issue of, this is what I want to bring out. The yeah. issue of the um, um, Land Use Act came out. You know what they said? They said, sir, we've studied your country like a book. Hmm. The Land Use Act is the power of the governors and they will die rather than let go of the power. So what do we do? Let's walk around it. That expression has not left my mind. And this was several, you can imagine how long ago this was. Yeah. Let's walk around it. The truth is that the Land Use Act is probably the most important weapon that governors carry and they, they put it under their own um, what the armpit and hold it themselves. Mm. They don't give it to their PA to hold. Because... They can deal with an opponent anytime, any day. But they fail to realize that one of the greatest you know, motivations of the society, of the, of the system, of your, of your state, is, 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 is production. And production will never happen except you have access to land. You've got to put your industry, your factory, wherever you go to get things, they are going to find out where you're going to be. And then you realize that if you don't belong to their party, bros, forget it. Forget about bringing investor. Forget about trying to do anything because you are never going to be given C of O to that land. As a matter of fact, if you are an opposition and you are doing very well, they will come and demolish that stuff to put on something of public interest. You know, it's become a tool to oppress instead of a tool to enhance the system, you know, Land Use Act is about everything. You go to a bank, they're going to ask you for your CFO for what you're going to do. If you don't have the CFO for the land, the feasibility that you are doing, 
Nobody's going to listen to you. To you. It's that important that we need to start to have governors that, that have confidence in themselves, governors that think of the largest good of, because Land Youth Act is not president now, it's governors, uh -huh. if you understand how it operates. Uh -huh. Even from the, mini, the, 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 the federal government, I, I was the national chairman of National Social Housing Scheme, and I went about, about around about 16 different states and got land for the federal government. What am I trying to say? Federal government had to go to the state governors and get land and beg, including the one I'm working with in Akwaibom today. So the Land Use Act is actually power in the hands of the governors. Mm -hmm. And because the constitutional matter, before you can change it, you are going to, even no matter what the National Assembly do, does, they will bring it back to the State of Assembly for concurrence. And the no state, state assemblies governor. are under the governors themselves. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Excuse and another me. thing about land use charge is that some landlords are also pushing it down to their tenants. It's become something that tenants and their landlords are beginning to battle over. Some landlords understand and do it themselves. They pay for it without pushing it to their tenants, but some do not. And so some tenants are saying, no, I am the tenant, you are the landlord, you deal with it. Well, let's leave it here. Is it yes, that, 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 Thank that you goes, so much. That would go a little bit off the land use act because the land use act tenants you have no business. It's because it's between the owner of the land and government. It's the, those are the two. You know, you don't even have we are you starting to talk, you don't even get mouth. You know, uh, yeah, that is that that table, you know, even there there. You exactly. understand me? Mm -hmm. It's exclusively Landlord. between the man who owns the land and the man who has power over the land. Mm -hmm. You know? So it it's, it's, it's something that we need to educate. If you are able to educate governors before they get into office on the imperatives for success, one of the things they will get to realize is that you need to open up and be more accommodating so that there will be more investment. And the more investment that comes, the better your government will be. It doesn't matter whether the person is in your party or is not in your party. When he thrives, then you as a governor, if you are smart, let the business thrive of the opposition go under tax. Tax the guy and collect your money. You get the point. Mm -hmm. You get your money. But when you say, I don't want my opposition, it means you are, you are, you are, you are little-minded. It, it tells means, about means the pettiness insecure. of the people who occupy yeah, public pettiness. offices. You are insecure. Yeah. It's a manifestation of insecurity. And a lot of our people, if you look at the background, that's why they don't want to tell you where they came from. They want to appear like they just, they've always been like this. No, guy. Your father, we know. Your mother, we know. Cool down. You've known poverty. So try to relate with the people that are poor. That's why I like the man like MKO Abiola. As, as rich as he was, he will tell you. The first time he wore shoes, he will tell you. He will tell you the first time he ate egg. He will tell you. He will tell you where he's coming from. He will tell you, man, he's dark out there so I can relate. You know, a lot of times, there was a time that my wife, you know, she, she we've been married for a long time and we went out together for a long time. This year will be 35 years married. Oh, wow. And so Congratulations. Like, why are you... <laughs> thank you. Why are you always... Um, these poor people, you want to greet them, you want to do... She's, a, she's an amazing woman. Hmm. So one day I almost broke down. I told her that there was a day that somebody, one of my relations, answered my greetings. And I didn't sleep well that night. I was so excited that George answered my greetings. George was like this privileged family and he actually looked at me and said hi how are you he waved at me i was so happy that a rich boy <laughs> you know told me how are you and greeted me so because people see me as somebody who is successful by the grace of god you have no idea what joy it brings to a poor boy when you go to him shake his head and say how are you doing i like your hair i like your shirt you would have changed that person's life forever you want so to be their own dance. judge yeah, I want to be, I like that. <laughs> well, let, let's wrap it here. Thank you so much for your yeah. time. Ezekiel and awesome. it took always a pleasure to have you on Off the Press. Thanks so much. And Baraka de Sala one more time. Thank you. Well, that's been Off the Press with Ezekiel and Yautok. An analyst who joined us from Akwaibom State is Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll be back shortly with a hot topic. Stay with us.